Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us. Um, today, we're starting the August edition. Today's the August edition of our monthly webinar series. Um, we started this series at the beginning of the year because we felt that it was together just to talk about important and interesting agricultural topics. As a department, we are pretty new at the delegation of German industry and commerce. We started our activities at the Competence Center Agribusiness in February. Ability to vocational training, water management, health and nutrition to today data and digital agriculture. We have further really interesting topics coming up. So some of you are joining us for the first time, others have been any further delays, our team will just jump right into today's topic. Like I said, we have a couple of really interesting, fantastic speakers with us today. I'm going to allow our host for today, um, or moderator for today, in so please feel free to ask any questions whenever you feel like asking questions. We have reserved the last 10 to 15 minutes for Q&As. And so please just use the chat function or the Q&A function and we'll return to your questions at the end. Thank you very much, uh, Inka, for uh, organizing this uh, program. And uh, I would like also to welcome uh, Jehil. Uh, who are both representing the Army and the uh, Air Force. They'll be wondering what this means, but uh, they, they are representing the ground forces and the Air Force. Enhance agriculture on the... I am uh, very proud of the work that they, they are doing. Uh, my name is Demiari von Kemedi, I'm the manager Alluvial is working across uh, uh, several countries uh, in Africa. It's very simple. Uh, it's to identify the requirements of farmers and to work with uh, provider, uh, financial service providers uh, to address the requirements of farmers as well as to provide access to markets uh, for farmers. Um, Jehil. Or... Yes, please go, go ahead with an overview of, uh, of Hello Tractors. Okay, and then I think we had a comment that the speakers uh, videos Aren't, aren't being um, but I guess in the in the interim let me let me give a quick overview of, of hello tractor um, I started this business about six years ago in Nigeria um, I'm, I'm from the US um, but and really across the Africa region, um, plant late, under cultivate their land and lose income because they don't have access to the labor or equipment that they need. To and most important resource. And this challenge, uh, because of demographic changes, in Africa is only becoming bigger. We have rapid urbanization. Um, we have this youth bulge, um, but these young people are increasingly moving into the cities. Uh, we have aging farm populations in the rural areas, depleting labor resources available to the farmer. And so typically mechanization, um, when you see these kinds of trends, uh, 
comes in to fill these labor gaps, mechanization, automation, everything that, that we've um, come to familiarize ourselves with. Um, but in Nigeria and, and, and across Sub-Saharan Africa, um, mechanization is yet to take hold. Um, the global average of, of tractors per 100 square kilometers of arable farmland is about 200. Africa averages about eight. Nigeria is about six and a half. So there's a huge uh, mechanization gap. And so Hello Tractor came in with a, with a solution to that problem. Now, our first solution was to just sell tractors. <laughs> Seems obvious. Um, so when we started our business, we were a tractor dealer six years ago. And we were uh, tractors, um, really designed for smallholder farmers. And, and we introduced technology as we received feedback from our customers. Um, but our initial go-to-market was just a small, low-horsepower tractor that these farmers could use to, to mechanize and, and fill that gap that I've described. Now, the technology ended up being what people wanted from us. Um, and that technology is this GPS monitoring devices that fit onto the tractor and um, apps for tractor owners to connect with farmers who need services. And that really became our core product. So three, three years after launching in Nigeria, we discontinued the sale of our tractors and focused on just selling the technology. Um, when we did that, the, the market quickly took up the technology. Um, right now we have over 2,000 tractor owners in Nigeria using our technology to manage their fleet, serving, servicing hundreds of thousands of farmers. Um, and, and we've also expanded into, into new markets. Um, 13 African countries. Uh, we're also in two Asian countries and, and two countries in the Americas. And so, um, there, because as a tech-enabled solution, we've been able to, to kind of grow um, fairly quickly. Um, but we do that, most importantly, through key partnerships, like those we have with Vaughn and Alluvial. Uh, because, as you all are familiar with, or maybe, maybe not, um, that last mile of agriculture is by far the most important piece of the the agricultural supply chain and having partners that can manage responsibly that last mile engage with farmers is by far the, the best and most robust channel to scale um, the technology. And because obviously you need customers and those who have relationships with customers are great channels to scale access to, to your products and, and to your technology. Um, so, that's kind of Hello Tractor in a nutshell. I'll get into the details of maybe some innovations that we have coming down the pipeline, some work that we're doing in tractor finance. Um, maybe we, we can even talk to our partnership with, uh, with Yuvon and Alluvial. However, um, the, the audience wants to kind of take the conversation, I'm happy to, to go in that direction, but I'll, I'll cap the, the intro on Hello Tractor there. It's a pleasure to, to connect with everybody here and. Feel free to ask questions as they come up. Thank you very much, uh, Jahil. Uh, we will come back to you, obviously. Uh, Toby, uh, uh, a bit about uh, uh, Drone Niger and um, what the service has been uh, so far. Uh, yeah. Okay, thank you, Ron. Uh, good morning, everybody. Good morning. My name is Toby Akimbi. I'm Managing Director of Drone Niger. First of all, I'd like to thank um, the delegation of German Industry and Commerce in Nigeria for this um, opportunity to speak at this webinar and um, also Yinka, Von, and everybody that made this webinar possible. I think such webinars are very necessary to create more awareness of technological solutions and advancements that not only help, but in my opinion, also hold the key to the economic growth in Nigeria. And, uh, can I just, sorry for interrupting, can I ask you to try putting on your video, please? I think it should work now. Sorry. 
Okay. Can I be seen? Yeah. Yeah, we can see you. Okay, great. Okay. As I was saying, I feel um, such uh, webinars are very necessary um, to create, you know, more awareness for the technology, technological solutions, as I said. And uh, furthermore, it also creates a platform where we can discuss these solutions and these advancements uh, in our country. And also, obviously, we can network. I feel great emphasis needs to be put into agriculture and alternative energy space, um, in which tremendous developments have been made in the te te technological space and the Internet of Things. So in Drone Niger, we use UAV technology to um, efficiently measure, monitor, and analyze various areas. That's the farm, soils, and crops. And through this, fruit yields are optimized, and um, they also stay documented for many years. So you can always go back and to see how 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 process has has been um, down the road. And Basically, before I continue, I want to explain what a drone is, what actually a UAV is. It's an unmanned aerial vehicle, that's the abbreviation. And what a drone basically does, it just collects data from the air. So it's a data collecting device that's airborne and it's unmanned. And depending on the payload that it has, it usually has a camera and that payload basically determines what we actually, the data that it is that we actually collect. And this data that we then collect is processed, evaluated, and in all, is, is evaluated in order to maximize productivity and bring out more sustainable approach in the agricultural um, space. Um, furthermore, agricultural drones are not only there to gather data, they also have some drones that have uh, tanks, and those tanks can be uh, filled with various um, things. I'll go into that a bit later but they use them for spraying and um, yeah, as I said, more to, about that a bit later. So the key to be more productive, I feel in the agricultural space is precision agriculture, as also Jahil said before. Um, also the maximization of productivity and efficiency through evidence-based and data-driven practices, which is what we do at Drone Agile with the drones and basically drones can do so this insights that we gather with the drones provides, it, um, provides us with more access and that allows farmers to eliminate guesswork. So back in the day, the farmer would probably walk through the fields and look at his crops. And if you have a huge field, obviously you can't see the entire field. So he'd walk and do systematic scans and see how the crop is doing, how his food yields is doing. So with the drones, we eliminate that guesswork. We have real data, actual data that we can look at and then react upon that. And that reduces waste of resources like water, fertilizers, pesticides, and also labor. So um, a more detailed and comprehensive understanding of a farm um, allows us to plan accurately and execute precisely. And also if there's any issue with your crop or irrigation, we can also respond quickly before the damage is too big. Um, so an aerial perspective of the field, of your field, or of a field, and, and the data that the drone provides can basically help more informed decisions and um, eliminate, as I said, the guesswork. So our experiences in Nigeria has been so far, um, people always talk about the high initial costs of uh, the drone technology and its implementation and the software, et cetera. Um, the actual, fact is that there has been lots of research on drone technology and the actual cost of things. Um, one, as far back as 2016, incidentally, a year before we started um, our startup company, PwC did a, a report or released a report and it projected that the drone would provide a $32.4 billion economic value to farmers. So it was not that drones are expensive, they actually add more value. And compared to tractors, for example, or sprayers or any other ag agricultural uh, machinery, drones are actually priced at uh, much lower. And the scales of not like tractors cost hundreds of thousands of dollars, uh, drones are actually just in the thousands. And uh, to get started, you really yes. have. Yes, uh, uh, sorry, Toby. Uh, can you describe the exact service that you provide? Do you sell the okay. drones? Oh, it is so we, drones as a what, service. 
what we like to do is, um, first of all, we need to create awareness of what drones can actually do. So we provide the services with the drones initially. But what we encourage farmers to do is to actually get their own drones and employ this technology because there's so many farmers in Nigeria. There's so much farmland in Nigeria. We cannot cater to all of them. So what we're trying to do is create awareness, show what can be done, and then train individual farmers how to use this technology. So that's what we do. We're a solution provider, but we also train on how to use this technology. So what I'm, what I'm, what we're basically more with uh, commercial, with smaller farms. It's mostly with smaller farmers, and we're trying to make them form a cooperative so that because they say, as I said, the initial cost is high. But if you have a cooperative of farmers, they get together and invest in this drone. They'll be like, okay, we can now service a larger area and we can put our money together, put our resources together. So it's not such a fin huge financial burden to an individual, but it's more um, for the corporate cooperative. Well, uh, we will obviously discuss uh, back end as you know. Uh, uh, this season alone, we are working with 31 towns covering that much number of uh, uh, hectares. So, we, uh, of course, we have, uh, Alluvia has a number of, uh, 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 but uh, it will be interesting um, uh, to share. And uh, we, we like to work other service providers mostly okay. um, rather than do things by ourselves so uh, I, I see a great opportunity here work together uh, to support smaller farmers uh, i think the uh, i'll call on a little bit more again in practice how his services are provided. I, I think that there is probably uh, something for, uh, for both organizations and from each other and to coordinate uh, activities. Uh, uh, Jahil, please, can you talk a little bit more on uh, how your service uh, is provided uh, and how uh, smallholders. Yeah, thanks, Vaughn. I think um, for me, the, the key in service delivery uh, is coordination. And Toby spoke about um, working through cooperatives, um, but then you also have pretty well established groups, Vaughn, the work that you're doing with your growers. Um, I see we have a team from corporate farmers who also is coordinating farmer networks across the last while. Um, I think I saw Dunlady as well from Tofan, um, who has an entire system of coordinating demand for tractor services, starting with hiring agents down to booking agents. But all of these kind of successful uh, organizations and companies have a common thing. It's coordinating that last mile so service delivery can happen at economies of scale and efficiently. For Hello Tractor, we use booking agents. They go out with our booking application. They identify farmer groups that need similar services at the same time in the same vicinity, book those farmers as a group, and then we connect through our technology uh, those bookings to tractor owners who are available and, and, and ready to service that demand. Um, and I, I would imagine that coordination and then amortization of the cost of service delivery across those large groups is exactly what, what Toby was referring to when he talked about working with these farmer cooperatives. And Bonnie, I know your business well enough to know that that's central to your business as well. And I think one of the things that we um, oftentimes forget, uh, especially those coming from outside of Nigeria, coming from outside of um, um, Sub-Saharan Africa, is that the technology companies that are successful in, let's say, North America, are riding the rails of public extension, which was put in place to organize the last mile. They're riding the rails of agronomists, crop consultants, 
um, crop advisory workers that organize the last mile group demand for all sorts of services from inputs to technology um, to trading services. Um, but that coordination had to happen first before the technology is relevant. And I don't think Nigeria is any different, right? I, but I think sometimes we forget about that history of agricultural development in more mature markets and want to jump straight into the technology. But as you can see from everybody that's represented on this panel, as well as some of my friends that are in the chat, the, the starting point is coordination across the last mile. Then you can bring in the cool drones or you can bring in the cool tractors and the booking applications and marketplace services. Um, you know, but the coordination has to happen first. And that's where um, Hello. We seem to have lost Jahil. Okay, Jahil, you're back now. <laughs> I don't know where you all lost me. <laughs> you know, I, I, when I saw it froze, I, I just ran it again. <laughs> I was just taking a pause, catch my breath. Now, I was saying that, um, let me just uh, summarize the point. Um, I was saying that, you know, the people on the panel, um, Vaughn, Toby, as well as our friends um, on, in the chat as well, um, Akeem and Dunlady, and just about anybody who's found success in agriculture did it by coordination, and specifically coordination across the last mile. And that's actually the same thing as, as actually true in more mature agricultural economies. If you look at how North America evolved, Brazilian agriculture evolved, um, Western European agriculture, it all started with um, organizing farmers so that transactions can, have, can happen more efficiently at economies of scale, um, as well as training and service delivery and um, technology transfers. And so, um, I think that's really important in a piece that, that we emphasize either directly as we look to continue to build our booking agent network or through the work that we do with partners. And I'll, I'll just leave it there. Before Absolutely. Uh, yeah. the, the hill is uh, spot on uh, there. And uh, actually, as you know, that's precisely alluvial. The, our, our business really is to aggregate uh, farmers and uh, uh, organize the into into those blocks that have been aggregated, uh, and, and this is really linked to the nature of Africa agriculture. Ag African agriculture is on smallholder uh, farmers. Uh, countries, particularly in Nigeria, you will be hard taxed to find a farm that is uh, fifteen thousand as a single commercial uh, farm. So for whatever service that you will be providing, whatever uh, input that you'll be selling into the, into the African agricultural uh, space, uh, you have to understand to be uh, successful and uh, technology itself uh, does not do the job. You have to be organized sufficiently uh, to to be able to receive technology. I would like to ask uh, um, to be what are the challenges, uh, to be what are the challenges you encountered in the deployment of your business uh, model? And while at that, to also tell us whether the absence of uh, uh, cell, cell signals in, in some of the is, is a challenge as well. So I didn't get the last part of your question. Oh, the last part of the question is, I, I, I said any challenges broadly in terms of deploying your, your technology, uh, but more specifically whether absence of uh, cell signals, uh, mobile signals is uh, well in, in some, some places. 
because obviously farms are mostly in very rural rural um, areas. Yeah. yeah. Well, the most challenges, as I said um, uh, earlier on in my introduction, is uh, mostly of a financial nature and trying to really and truly um, in person explain where this financial um, um, value added uh, service or rather value added tool comes in and um, also creating an awareness of, because many people understand, okay, drones are these things that fly around, but how can I use it as a farmer? How can the drone help me as a farmer? So what um, the challenges of more, yeah, the challenges more or less that we face is always the um, education of this technology and how it's really implemented, really and truly explaining that it can be used from pre-planting up onto crop upkeep and harvesting insights of your farm. So you more or less have an all year round value. Um, as Jahil said, there's no point in having all this great technology if at, at the beginning, your planning processes, your planning stages have not been done uh, thoroughly. And then that also, we feel the where technology and the drone technology comes in to really and truly systematically plan your field, know exactly where you have what, do your contour mappings. So you know exactly, you have a visual feedback of your map. And also if you have any boundaries, you know, if those boundaries are being encroached on or if they're porous, you can be able to see that. So really and truly just um, creating awareness and explaining the technology. In terms of um, signals, um, uh, GPS signals, the beauty of the capturing of the data is that when we capture the data, it happens um, via GPS more or less. And these are satellite, um, GLONASS satellite um, coverage. And we always have coverage everywhere in the world. We have satellite coverage. Google Maps is um, evidence to that. So what we can do once we've processed, uh, once we've caught the data, we can process it now in an environment where we do have data coverage. So if it's not uh, of a timely nature, then we have time to process the data and present it a couple of days after we've captured it. Basically. Okay, looks like as soon as you mentioned the word data. Okay, fine. The connection word. <laughs> <laughs> the irony. <laughs> okay. So if you are relying on um, uh, satellites uh, uh, to provide you that coverage, that makes it uh, a little bit more expensive. So, uh, so it takes me also to the next question I was going to ask you. Uh, can you put a price to the work of the drone in one hectare? Uh, all of the work that the drone does, not the cost of the drone itself, uh, but drone as a service, uh mm. taking into consideration all the work it does on on one hectare what what, what will be okay. that price to give you an estimate um as i was talking about the contour mapping for example that's very easy to be able to price in hectares so per hectare it's uh, fifteen thousand naira. Fifteen thousand naira. yes what yes. else does it do so to map, as I said, once you've mapped out your area, you know exactly where you're going to plant, where, what, and um, how. Then we have, in one hectare also, you can have something that we use, um, uh, for example, use cross crop assessment. That's if you already have crops there. And then we can see the health of the crops. Uh, we can see the, um, how they're doing, more or less, uh, contract irrigation. So these drones are basically equipped with a multi-spectral camera. And what a multi-spectral camera does, we can create now um, what they call vegetation index maps, which are VI maps, to reveal critical information of your crops. And one of these maps that we have is, for example, NDVI, which is the, just a normalized difference vegetation index map. And on that, we can see how healthy or not your plant is. And it's basically- And this service will cost how much? The, to do an NDVI scan of one hectare is around 18,000. Again, it always depends the area we are, how many hectares yeah, we have. No, we, are, we are just, we are, we are getting somewhere. So now, exactly. uh, so, so far 95,000, what's the next one? You said 95,000. No, 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 it's 15,000 is for That's the... Right. It's for the contour mapping. The contour mapping, correct, yes. And the, the NDVI is 18,000. I've just called the second one crop observation for want of a... 
technical Proper assessment, word. you can call it, yeah. No, proper assessment, yeah. exactly. Okay. Yeah. And is yeah. it done continuously or is it done once? It's uh, up to the farmer. If you wanted, obviously, continuously would make more sense because then you'll be able to monitor really and truly from stage wise the um, development of your crops. Yeah, but did you say As that one, to... assessment, one assessment is 80,000 naira? 18, one eight. Oh, one eight, one eight. Okay, okay, I see. Okay. Per hectare, yes. Per hectare. <laughs> okay, because yeah, that's what I was wondering about 19. <laughs> yeah, I think you're old. <laughs> Okay, so the remaining one will help you. Good. So, is this all? I, is this all of the work? Okay, then you have the drones that can spray. They're basically um, crop dusters. What these, they call these them. are Jahil's competitors. These are Jahil's direct competitors. Okay. The ones that can spray. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, so this, this one is is how much power, uh, and I get more comfortable here because you know. I'm also part of the army, not, not so much the Air Force. Where you the are. Air Force. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so here, how much is this one? It's around 12,500. Again, depending on how many hectares, the more hectares you, you have, obviously the price is going to go down. 1,500 per hectare? Sorry? 12,000, 12,500, 12,500. How much? 10,500? 12,500. 12, yeah. Uh, Jahil, this is almost the same as, as what the tractor will do, right? Probably tractor will do uh, 10,000 for spraying. Jahil? Uh, Jahil, can you hear us? I, I can hear you now. Yes, I was saying that uh, for spraying, uh, this... Uh, UAV will do 12,500, but I think uh, a tractor will do uh, for less or mm -hmm. the same. Yeah, maybe slightly less. Um, I don't know if, but Toby, I mean, let me, let me, let me ask you, right? Would you, yeah. would, would, would you, wouldn't you say that with the, with the spectral maps, um, your, your value proposition wouldn't be, um, kind of blanket spraying, I think you guys would be capable of doing more precision spraying based on what the NDVI maps reveal around stress and appeal. Absolutely. Right? So, so going on to your point, yeah, it would be, it would definitely be cheaper to do it with a tractor, but it would be more precise to do it with uh, a drone. And so the amount of chemicals that you would presumably use would be less with the drone application because you're doing spot treatments right. and not a blanket spray right. across the canopy. Um, with that said, I would encourage everybody to still use tractors. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> And I Despite said, the benefits of drones, I would encourage the audience. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, but but I think I've also spotted one good in cooperation. Yeah. After this contour mapping, what follows? Uh, what's the value of the contour mapping, uh, Toby? So as I said, the contour mapping uh, is uh, you do that before um, you start planting. And the map, uh, the drone basically helps you to map out your entire um, farm. So you have something like plot management. And um, you can now, with, um, for example, check the irrigation. So prior to and after the planting, you can now track the irrigation after the, tracks, uh, after the crops have been planted. So um, through spectral and thermal imaging cameras, you can tell which plants or which parts of the field have too much water or don't have enough water. Uh, with okay. that insight, as Jahil said, you can now save, you know, money okay. with Okay, so for the, for the contour, uh, Jahil, I don't know whether, I, I mean, this might not even be a good question to ask you because, uh, but you know the level machine, right? Yeah. The Jahil, the level machine, because what? my assumption, it, my assumption is that with your contour map, 
then you can you can see the layout of the land, which part is higher than the other one. Exactly, and then you can now uh, uh, so, specify so where you can, to plant. You can, so I, I'm just trying to look for a way for both of you to work together to work because together. The, yeah. So after this aerial observation, then the army moves in. You know? So so uh, this is an area that a lot of people do not invest in. Uh, for smallholder farmers, it's almost unheard of uh, to invest in properly doing your contour mapping, uh, which will guide you in, in leveling. Because leveling uh, eventually, not in one season, but it, it eventually saves a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, money in the sense that whatever you apply, whether you apply it with a drone uh, or you apply from the surface, but particularly things like fertilizer, if, if you, and particularly so, if it is rice we are talking about here, uh, you need the land to be as flat as, as possible and your, your contour mapping will help you uh, to get it right and then the level machine comes in uh, to help you level out the, the land. Uh, Jahil, are there things that can be carried by a 75 horsepower? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so as far as leveling equipment, um, even like laser land leveling, which is, which is technology that's been proven to not only even out the soil, but but minimize erosion. I mean, water better water resource management using this type of equipment. Um, but it also it goes back to um, some of the points being made earlier around technology transfer. Many of the growers in Nigeria um, they just want this plow and maybe ridging or harrowing after. Um, and so even as as we introduce new types of these ways there's there's oftentimes some resistance to that um, and so there's a there's a huge educational component but the benefits are clear and um, laser land leveling is something that is has very clear and proven results and it doesn't need to be done very often um, and so uh, but I think the educational point uh, has to come first, where farmers first have to understand the benefits of it. Um, and we have to protect our soils in, in Nigeria because, as, as you all know, just over-disking the land comes with so many different negative um, kind of drawbacks, um, oftentimes exceeding the benefits in the long run. So things like land leveling, to mitigate some of the soil erosion and um, so limit overall topsoil for today and the future seasons to come. Uh, oh, man. Me... Is my camera frozen again? Oh mm -hmm. my gosh. Uh, it's frozen. Can you repeat a bit of what you said? Repeat okay. the last one, one minute. Okay. Now, I was, I was just saying that I think it's. My, my, I think my kids are watching like their cartoons right now because I'm working from home today, and they're just killing the bandwidth right now with all their little shows. <laughs> Sorry about that, but just repeat, just repeat that. I was saying, um, yeah, there, there are some clear benefits to to, to land leveling um, from better water resource management to better managing soil and particularly the topsoil that tends to um, wash away during the heavy rains. Um, and that's soil that, that literally uh, those farmers need to maintain uh, crop productivity. Uh, but that education point has to come first where farmers see the benefit of that. Um, things like, you know, investing in this sort of technology like land leveling, um, because the benefits maybe aren't so immediate. And so a lot of farmers don't necessarily think to, the future when it comes to soil management um, and, and water resource management. And so I think that's where that education piece is, is going to be key. But um, and I know you guys over at Luga, I know you all are doing a lot of demo plots and educating your growers. Um, and I, I think we need to, we need to think creatively about 
how to scale up a lot of that um, to to reach more farmers. And the unfortunate reality is in countries that have more developed agricultural markets, the government takes on a lot of that responsibility. Um, but if, if we don't have that government participation in those areas, then we have to figure out other ways to get the information to the farmers so they see the benefits and they adopt these technologies as well because it won't have a negative impact today. You know, you might miss, if you blink, you'll miss the benefits even. But I think in the, in the medium to long term, you'll see soils completely devastated. And that has everything to do with not doing things like leveling or maybe even introducing um, less disrupted forms of land preparation as well, which, which hasn't really caught on yet in Nigeria at scale. So, I mean, these are all things that, um, that are worth exploring further and innovating around. And that's not necessarily technology innovation, maybe it's service delivery innovation, technology transfer innovation, um, to affordably get that information out to all these farmers, because there's, you know, there's not even enough grant money available to support the broad proliferation of this information. So we as private sector companies need to really think about how we can do it at scale while remaining profitable and solve it. Okay, thanks a lot. Uh, you, you've just in area, Jahil, and uh, I would like to uh, use this opportunity to for um, for the decision that you have taken to invest in these women that uh, Alluvial Mastercard uh, Foundation and uh, and Tata had just uh, trained uh, in tractor uh, operations. Hello Truck has decided to co-invest uh, to finance the, their own uh, tractors. And, and I'm just wondering uh, an opportunity to loop into a bit here. Maybe we do some uh, a major demo somewhere in Kirby State where we are discussing with uh, the possibility of doing it by season uh, for CNG to pump uh, to pump water as to petrol, which is more expensive. Uh, uh, more critically, using to pump uh, the same uh, ground for the for the farmers. So this could be for uh, for the three of us to. To everything best practice, uh, women tractor, women financed by uh, Hello Truck, acquire tractors trained by Aluvia and Tata, um, um, the uh, uh, with the drone tech, even though it sounds expensive, but let's really truly. Uh, what this really means, how that fits into uh, the uh, the cost of production. Unfortunately, with smallholders, all about cost of production per season, uh, no length, no long term investment. But if you are going to do the contour mapping, which is not cheap term uh, uh, investment, then you you do the leveling. That's also a long term investment. It's not in by the time. You in a typical uh, cost of production for this season, your, the profit of the farmer is wiped out. We have got to figure out a way uh, to involve some kind of long-term financing in, in this, for, for this sense. So maybe backstage, we can, we can talk about this. Some of these things uh, you and I have already needs to add to it. It's not, it's not a lot, it's something we can Almost just get go ahead and uh, and get done. Uh, back to uh, Toby because I, I recognize that the time is uh, uh, fast. But I wanted to ask you, Jahil, as someone who is invested <clears throat> in in tractors, uh, what the future of tractors uh, will be, uh, given all the conversation. Um, conservation, uh, agriculture, conservation tillage, 
uh, and also the amount of uh, diesel that is consumed by uh, whether there is any feature for electric track this is uh, in fact profitable yeah well we've been we've been um, working pretty closely with the escorts team out of India who has a low cost electric tractor that's in the market, not, not in Africa yet, but I think there's some opportunities in Africa um, as well as the Monarch uh, tractor team that has a, a, an electric tractor that's also autonomous. That's being, that's out of the US. Um, I think these have very real near term benefits it does introduce some, some new benefit, but also some potential drawbacks. And I'll give, I'll, I'll share maybe examples on both. The benefits are clean diesel in rural areas is an ongoing issue and it's very expensive. Uh, and so you can replace uh, the need for diesel uh, with more sustainable and accessible sources of energy for your tractor. That's a win-win for the farmer because the savings should presumably be, get passed down to the farmer as well as for the tractor owner because anybody who owns a tractor knows that once you put dirty or compromised fuel into your tractor, the first thing that's going to um, But here's the drawbacks, right? Um, you need charging stations. Um, and panel and battery technology has developed quite a bit, a solar panel that is in charging technology has developed quite a bit, but is it reliant, is it reliable enough to charge a tractor that's gonna, you know, that consumes a tremendous amount of power when doing specifically some of those activities early in the production cycle. But the, but the opportunity is there, and the, the, even these issues that I'm talking about, are being worked on by people a lot smarter than me. And, and so I think we'll start to see some of this type of equipment in Africa. Now, I think the more interesting solutions um, that are maybe closer to market ready is the promotion of more conservation activities on the soil. So these are still very low fuel consumption activities like direct seeding where you don't have to completely decimate the soil, minimal disruption to the soil, um, plant the seed directly, do spot treatments of your fertilizer and your crop care. Um, near term because it has the benefit of in terms of long term helping protect their soils while maintaining growing productivity. It's also attractive for tractor owners, but I think to get this convergence of interest, tractor owners have to be educated and farmers have to be educated. And that comes at a cost, right? And so, but I think those types of activities, electric tractors, which we've been looking a lot at, um, and, and might even start some pilots pretty soon. Um, we'll keep you posted on that. Um, but I think these are all really amazing things that we can do very quickly to support our growers. Um, I am asking any question, but I they are permanently. Why was as well? So yes, we've had two questions in the Q and A, and Jahil has attended to one of them. I think he's typing an answer to the second long one, but perhaps Jihil, you can take yeah. this moment to address the question directly. Uh, yeah, I was actually in the middle of responding over the text. Um, yeah, so for, as far as uh, bringing in liquidity into the market and appropriate financing, Vaughn, you kind of alluded to this already, but um, we brought in some financing to to, to to provide credit, low cost credit, to support more tractor owners in Nigeria. Um, and, you know, but we're doing it under a pay as you go system. So, you know, tractors are very, the tractor hiring business is a seasonal business. Um, and we think we, through pay as you go, can tie 
repayments to tractor activity. We also routinely have far more demand for services than tractors to supply. So in addition to receiving flexible financing, you also, as a customer of Hello Tractor, receive a book of business that you can service with that tractor to ensure that you're successful. And as you service that book of business, we're just deducting small incremental loan repayments to ensure you're successful. Um, and I think that's the future of that's the future of financing. And I, I certainly think it's a recipe to bring in more capital in a low risk way into Nigeria. Now we still gotta figure out how to fix the Naira because tractors in Nigeria are literally double the price of tractors in just Kenya and probably about two or three times the price of what they are in India. So we gotta figure out that stuff too. But as far as financing and bringing in liquidity, we do think we have a, a workable solution uh, for Nigeria. And, and it's just to, to prove out the use case so more of our, our partners and some of the big commercial players can come in um, and capitalize this sector that's just in dire need of financing that's appropriate and affordable. Um, uh, Toby, uh, do you see anything in the, um, in the business model of uh, Hello Tractor that could appeal to you in your own business? Um, well, definitely the, um, as Jahil rightly said, is first of all, you know, educating the farmer of, um, what's available and how best to implement it into their process that they're used to. And also more or less, because I feel also in Nigeria, many farmers are shy away from technology and technological advancements because they feel okay, we've been doing it for such a long time. We've sort of been sustainable. But they don't understand that this um, technological and digital revolution um, can't be um, uh, av uh, avoided because it, it's coming. And the other countries already that are embracing it, if you look at Rwanda, if you look at Ghana, these are countries that have already embraced this technology and have overtaken us in certain aspects of um, agricultural produce. If you just um, look at the... Um, Numbers, for example, we used to be number one cocoa being um, export in the world. Um, that was back in the day, and now we're fourth with palm oil. We also used to be number one, now we're third. Um, plantain, we're only fifth um, leading producer of plantain. You know, um, they're just these certain numbers that would technology would give us back that. Um, title of the giant of Africa and not just the title, but actually really and truly being the giant of Africa and being able to produce um, more and more efficiently. And also, as Jahil said, I feel that um, there's more the private sector doing these things. Um, we need, need more um, support from the public sector to encourage this technology, to encourage this um, financing and um, work on finance models. and. The finance models that, that Jahil said, I think, are um, sustainable and make a lot of sense. And we might also adapt certain models uh, in the future to make these investments more attractive for the average farmer. And also one point that I want to bring across is also we need to involve the youth more in agriculture. We need to, uh, with this technology, agriculture has now become cool. You know, it's not just going out, you know, kicking rocks and going through the fields and looking at the plants like you can actually use cool tech um, to be sustainable to be a farmer it's 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 going to be cool to be a farmer and we need to get the youth more in, involved because also if you look at nigeria we have so many young people and they're out of jobs what, what, what are they doing you know and um, now if you can educate them of using technology in farming and killing two birds with one stone implementing technology and growing the agricultural industry which is very necessary you uh, and um, so uh, a quick question for you again in future are you looking at um, uh, at how farmers can understand the value uh, addition if, 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 if it does this lead to cost savings does this lead to better yield and it's this to farmers, 
uh, they want to spend as little as possible, as much as possible. So how mm-hmm. that this extra cost will more profit? I didn't get your full question because I was breaking up, but um, I think you were talking about how- The question is how, how farmers are business people, essentially. You convince yeah. farmers that okay. drones is worth it. So what we usually do um, is we go to a lot of trade shows, international trade shows, um, agricultural trade shows also, one of which is coming up in October, um, which is um, AgroFood. Um, at Landmark Center. So we engage with the farmers and also do, um, it's difficult to do demonstrations, but we try to explain to them what exactly the drone does. We show them their value chain and where the drone comes in and how they can benefit from this technology. Then we take it a step further and do, if it's in our vicinity, um, we do demonstration on the farms. So we show them exactly, okay, this is not just talking about it, hypothetically what can be done. We show them what can be done. Um, If it's, be it spring, um, be it the uh, console mapping, we show them, okay, once we, they have the map, we show them exactly, okay, now this is the overview that you have. This is the information, the data that you have that will help you to be able to uh, farm in a more sustainable manner. Because seeing is believing. You can talk about technology. Any last word from Jay? Uh, we hand back one minute, Jay. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll, take, I'll take less than a minute. Um, There was a question about how industry can participate. I think the thread that's common across the panelists as well as what I'm seeing in the chat room is that uh, cooperation is key and very welcome in Nigeria. Um, But I think the business community has to engage more deeply and, and, you know, engaging and doing business in Nigeria is not about dumping products. Everybody on this call and everybody in the chat is talking about how to build our systems to support the farming sector. And so that means doing more than just selling a a piece of equipment or technology. And so I think when we think about how to deepen partnerships within and outside of Nigeria, unifying around system, building out commercial systems that can support sustainable businesses, that can scale is key. Um, and I think everybody on this call would be encouraged to explore those, type, those types of opportunities with the German business community. Thank you very much, uh, Jahil. Uh, uh, one minute again. Your last word. To- okay. Um- Thanks again for the opportunity. And I'd just like to say as a closing remark, I think um, as Jahil said and some um, comments in the uh, chat section is that it would be great if we had um, a platform where we can exchange ideas and basically not just the farmers, but also us form synergies and uh, uh, um, collaborate on certain projects. So that Jahil with his uh, tractor technology, we with our drone technology, and I'm sure the other way um, like-minded people in this uh, in this uh, webinar that also have an input that would bring us further and help agriculture in Nigeria. Thank you. Uh, thank. You. We already have that. Uh, you, Jahil, and I are going to best practice uh, uh, project. Uh, I will hand over back to. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Awesome. Thank you so much to every single one of you who joined us today. Thank you, Toby, for showcasing what you do, how you do it, and how you um, make a really important contribution to not just digital agriculture, but essentially um, food security um, in Nigeria, which is, um, of course, for collaboration. Again, collaboration and cooperation rather than um, seeing each other as competitors. I think that's really, really important, particularly when it comes to matters as important as nutrition and food security. So thank you so much. We, I think we all agree that there are making a significant contribution. We're happy to support further conversations and also to invite um, listeners and participants to join um, future talks um, about um, data and data.
together stakeholders from the public and the private sector to address various topics. Our upcoming topics look at climate smart agriculture and access to finance. Um, these are going to be really interesting topics as well. So if you um, want to join them, please make sure to follow us on our social media platforms on Instagram and on LinkedIn to be informed about who will be speaking next and how to join and register. Afterwards, if you have any questions. Again, thank you so much to our participants and thank you to our speakers. It was a pleasure having you with us today. Goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Bye, everyone. Thank you.